So hello friends, hi everybody, good evening and welcome to another session on Tech Tablet with me Varun Rao. And in today's session, what we would be doing is let us just, you know, understand a bit further on OData. In the previous session, we have discussed about a bit of OData that is how to import and, you know, what to see and what not to see. And in this session in specific, we would be looking at OData project structuring, understanding the data model, the runtime artifacts, service maintenance, service implementation folder in brief. We'll just understand about all of these in brief, right? So just before we begin, let us just go back to the server. Right now, this is the SCGW P code that I would be entering. And when I create a new project, right? We can just name this the video. Or you know, we can just name this as the YouTube video. And you know, test for YouTube. I'll say this is my local object. And we have four folders that we find uh, are created against a project that we create. Right. And we have created a project using this create new button. We have a create project option here. So I've used that the option that's available and you have nothing in any of the folder right now but then it is pretty important for us to understand what these folders are before and, and you know what these folders would consist of before we dive deep into our data right so this is what we would be talking in today's session now if any of you is looking for a detailed training on the same module you can always contact us and if not, it would be lovely. We would really love it if you could enjoy the sessions that are being posted out of passion to reach at least a few. Right. So now going further, what we'll do is uh, let us understand what are the different um, folders that we have. So as we know, the first folder that is created is a data model. A data model basically has an entity type, an entity set, an association, uh, and, and you know things like these can be defined here. Moreover, related to fields and mapping and you know navigation, this is what the data model folder handles. And very precisely, it would consist of all the fields that you're importing from your ABAP in the form of DDIC or probably from a BAPI or wherever you find DeemFit. Okay. <clears throat> and then you have your service implementation. So let us understand runtime artifacts and service implementation because these two folders consist of quite a lot of information. So let's just quickly get back and let us go and look into understanding a service implementation folder and runtime artifacts as well. So we would be beginning with runtime artifacts. And in, in, in this folder, we would be having six classes that would be generated or created whenever you click on the button runtime artifact. And this is that button, the one in the red generate runtime objects that you're able to see, this would do the thing for you. And when you do uh, click or press on that button, you would be having these six classes that are generated DPC, that's data provider class, which is a base class, and you would also be having an extension class of it. MPC, which is model provider class, followed by another extension class to it. You would be having a service folder of underscore SRV and, and, and the model the underscore NDL. So these are the six uh, classes that you would be finding when you generate runtime artifacts. Now, what would these six classes do and what do they, you know, what is their role in the project? So the first one is DPC, which is your base class. This is an ABAP class, okay? And it provides all the methods uh, to implement your raw data request. The second one would be DPC extension, wherein you would be defining the backend logic required. And you can also, you know, redefine your OData project here. When I say you can redefine your OData project, most of your logic of your entire application is done in your DPC extension. And this is for the developers to have fun, to go wild and to, you know, you can probably do whatever is the piece of coding that you're looking at. Then you have your MPC base class. Now this is also an ABAP class. And in this class, you will be having your EDMs. We have seen in one of the previous session, when you import a table from SC11 and you get it to your OData server, you would be having your 
data types uh, which would be converting into EDMs, that is entity data models. And these entity data models are all stored or recorded in the MPC base class. Actually, a developer is not supposed to fiddle around in the MPC class and it's pretty clearly written on the top of the program in the class as to not to, I mean, this part is not for developers, so please do not modify it. It's, it's very clearly written. So, you know, that's the thing. And then you have the MPC extension. MPC extension to talk about would uh, consist of the base class again, would inherit the properties of base class. Developers again, you know, generally do not modify, but if there's anything that you want to change with respect to your project structuring, you can always get into MPC extension and do it. Finally, you have your model. This is the technical name of your data service created when you, you know, create a new project and you kind of activate it. At that point of time, you would be having your MDL, which is created in your runtime artifacts. And then finally, you would be having your underscore SRV. Underscore SRV is the technical service name. Now, this is the name that your project would be identified with or your project would be called for on the front end as well. Let us say that you've created a new project of purchase order and you've named it PO underscore order. So you would be in, in, in the front end, you would be using PO underscore order underscore SRV in order to instantiate or trigger your project in the back end. So this is the role of underscore SRV. Then you have your service implementation where you have uh, five methods, five CRUD methods. When I say CRUD, you would be having your create, read. Uh, you have uh, or two strong approach in read. One is for read entity and one is your read entity set. One is to read only a single record. The other one is to read the entire list of information that's available in your data operations. And finally, you have your update entity and then your delete entity. All these are used to ensure that your CRUD operations are fulfilled on your backend side. And these five methods are a part of your service implementation. And then we would be having the service maintenance folder. Service maintenance folder is basically to ensure that your uh, UI5 or your, or your OData server is connected to your ABAP server, right? Now this is to basically ensure that the data is being exchanged and uh, that, it, that your service is registered to the backend. It's very important for you to register your service each and every time you create a new project. You have to ensure that your service is created and sorry that your service is registered and this is the place where you would be able to register a service from right so these are the four folders that we have available and that is their functionality in a project i hope that you have understood and you have learned something new but then if you have any queries that you would want to ask about you have the comment section below please make use of it hit the like button if in case you liked what is what's being uh, exchange between us that would always encourage us to do further and if you're looking forward to follow us you can always hit the subscribe and the bell button to have regular notification on, on what we're doing and it would be really great if you could share this to a few at least you know it might help a few who is looking for some information out there on the same topic so thanks a lot for watching and in the next video we would be looking at about statements that are not used in audit i've had a lot of queries on this so that would be something uh, that would be the topic for the next video. So I hope you have enjoyed the session and learned something new. Do stay subscribed to this channel as there is a lot yet to be exchanged between us in terms of information and even in terms of you know, knowledge and quality. So yeah, thanks a lot for being there. All the very best.